The Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, avoids hitting China in the chairman's statement it issues Thursday. The ASEAN chairman's statement, the most important document issued by ASEAN after every leader's summit, evades any reference to China's militarization of the disputed South China Sea. This statement is softer than previous ASEAN chairman statements that tackled the disputed South China Sea, vaguely citing the need for non-militarization and self-restraint. The ASEAN chairman's statement says, quote, We likewise reaffirm the importance of maintaining and promoting peace, security, stability, maritime safety and security, rules-based order and freedom of navigation in and over flight above the South China Sea. It also emphasizes the 2002 Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea and the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, two documents that stress the need for peace in disputed waters. This year's ASEAN chair, the Philippines, under President Rodrigo Duterte, is a claimant country in the South China Sea. The Philippines downplays its claim over parts of the disputed waters for the sake of boosting ties with Beijing. The Philippines pulls ahead of China in the third quarter of 2017 after reporting a 6.9% growth in its gross domestic product. The Philippines' 6.9% GDP growth is slightly ahead of China's 6.8%. The last time the Philippines pulled this off was in the third quarter of 2016, when the Philippines expanded 7% and China's 6.7%. Philippine gross domestic product has been growing more than 6% for nine consecutive quarters. The Philippine Statistic Authority says the country's third quarter growth is faster than the 6.7% growth in the previous quarter of the year, but lower than the 7.1% in the third quarter of 2016. The PSA cites the household final consumption expenditure, durable equipment, and net exports as major contributors to faster GDP growth. The CAP of Ages Juris Fraternity member John Paul Solano on Thursday insists freshman law student Horacio Castillo III did not die of hazing. Solano's camp files affidavits of medical expert witnesses to dispute a histopathological report of the Manila police that says severe blunt traumatic injuries caused Castillo's death. Lawyer and surgeon Floresto Arizala, former chief medical legal at the National Bureau of Investigation, says it is out of this world to say Castillo died of hazing. Arizala says the final report released by the PNP contained false findings because the PNP's chief medical legal did not have personal knowledge about any alleged hazing. Aside from Arizala, the Solano camp submits the affidavits of two other expert witnesses, pathologist Bu Castro and physician Rodel Capule. All three point out that the disparities between the first medical legal report and the final histopathological report are suspect. The first medical legal report was dated September 20, or three days after Castillo's death. It did not indicate the cause of death, but it noted Castillo had an enlarged heart. The PNP's histopathological report dated October 3 said there was normal histology in Castillo's brain, heart, and spleen. But forensics expert Raquel Fortune says it is not unusual to have differences in the medical legal and the histopathological reports. Presidential spokesperson Harry Rocker refuses to comment on a post by Communications Assistant Secretary Moka Uson misquoting Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Rocker says he has no jurisdiction over the matter. He also says he would rather the issue be addressed by Communications Secretary Martin Andenar. In the Facebook post, blogger RJ Nieto posts a graphic misquoting Trudeau as saying, quote, Theoretically, it is impossible to get the garbage back even if it originally came from Canada. He posts it alongside a caption saying, quote, After the PR blitz, this is what we get from Canadian PM Justin Trudeau. At the end of the day, I'd rather have a crass and unclassy president who gets things done. Pictures of the handsome guy, that will be forgotten, but not the garbage rotting in our ports. Usan shares this post with a caption, We know someone like that in the Philippines. Fond of photo ops, especially with kids. That's so fake. But in Rappler's own transcripts and reports by several other news outlets, Trudeau's statement was clear. He said it is possible to get it back. Even though it originally came from Canada, we had uh, legal barriers and restrictions that prevented us uh, from being able to take it back. Uh, those uh, regulations and those, that, those impediments have now been addressed, so it is now theoretically possible uh, to get it back. Roca says, quote, I am a completely separate department, and I trust that PCOO will address this matter, if at all. And Denar has not yet responded to Rappler's request for comment. <laughs> A 500-year-old painting believed to be by Leonardo da Vinci sells for $450.3 million in New York Wednesday, blazing a new world record for the most expensive work of art sold at auction. 
Salvador Mundi, or Savior of the World, was lost for years, only to resurface at a regional auction in 2005. The Salvatore Mundi, which depicts Jesus Christ, more than doubles the previous record of $179.4 million paid for Pablo Picasso's The Women of Algiers, version O, in 2015. Auction House Christie says it is one of fewer than 20 da Vinci paintings generally accepted as being from the Renaissance master's own hand. All the others are held in museum or institutional collections. Christie's declines to identify the buyer, other than to confirm that bids came from every part of the world. Thank you.